Hey everyone! In this lesson we're going to be talking about plants. Uh, this is sort of a continuation of our discussion on how we can classify different living things. Uh, a couple of lessons ago we looked at uh, classifying living things according to the the five or six or seven or eight major kingdoms of living things. Uh, and if you think back to that, uh, you'll remember that uh, two of those kingdoms were the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. So uh, in the previous video, we talked about how we classify animals um, when you when we look at the sort of the, the subdivisions, the subgroups that we can categorize uh, animals into. Um, and so in this lesson, we're going to be doing not exactly the same thing. We're not going to be breaking down uh, plants the same way, but we're just going to be looking at plants in general. What are some uh, cool things about them, and um, we're going to really zero in on talking about photosynthesis in this lesson. So if you think back to when we were going through the different kingdoms of living things, we began by asking what makes a plant a plant. When we got to, you know, when we were talking about each kingdom, what makes this kingdom different from the rest? And uh, there was that one kingdom, the protists, which don't really seem to have a proper set of rules. They're just sort of a, a bunch of oddballs and misfits that don't fit in other kingdoms. But the plant kingdom, along with animals, fungi, and uh, monerans, um, they have their own sort of defined set of characteristics that we can say anything that m meets, you know, this criterion, this one, and this one, has to be uh you know or whatever so like for in the case of plants we've got some uh different things that are pretty unique to plants it's not necessarily uh only plants that that do this but uh for the vast majority uh, of plants what we find is that uh, they make their own food through photosynthesis so that's uh that's this right here photosynthesis so plants make their own food through photosynthesis and because they make their own food they're called autotrophs or the the less fancy word for that is producers so producers basically just means that they don't need to eat anything else to get their energy they make that energy themselves so they do still need to take in stuff that's not already a part of their you know body if you will um, they still need to take in water they still need to take in carbon dioxide and they still need some energy coming in from the sun. They need some sort of energy source that's not already within them. So they do still need to make use of things in the environment around them. But using that stuff, they're able to actually make their own food. Now, the point that uh, I find most interesting about plants is that it's not that they just take the carbon dioxide, uh, the water and the sunlight and just boom they just take all three of those and just they just use those three by themselves for their energy it goes through a really really complicated process um, that uh, ends up in the production of sugar essentially um, and that's what they'll actually burn for their energy so it's quite interesting to look at how plants are able to take carbon dioxide water and energy from the sun and turn it into sugar that they can then use for all of the things that they actually need uh, energy for. Um, and then a little bit at the end we'll talk just a, uh, just a smidge at the end about, um, about seeds. Um, but plants in general, if you wanted to divide plants into two really really broad categories, those two categories uh, could be uh, plants that have seeds and plants that don't have any seeds whatsoever. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, at the end of this lesson, you'll see that I've uh, I've left the door open for a second video on uh, plants, and uh, that's going to sort of be based on your guys' interest in studying this stuff more um, after this first lesson is, is done. So we'll get to that uh, a little bit later on. One question that uh, 
comes up sometimes, but it's not really discussed on you know on the previous slide and when we were talking before. What makes plants green? So, when we look at uh, other organisms in nature, we'll we don't always find the most broad you know color spectrum. Um, like you might see, like for example, with humans, you'll have skin tones that range from light to dark, but they're all some sort of shade of brown. Like you, you don't see any like blue or green humans, right? Um, so uh, with plants, why is it that when we look at them, we see that they're all green? Now this isn't the most complicated, you know, part of the of the you know stuff that we're going to discuss today, but uh, it's just. Uh, it's interesting to note that plants are green because they contain this special pigment called chlorophyll. I'm going to underline it in green because, you know, that's sort of the, the theme we got going on in this slide. Um, so plants are green due to this special pigment. And uh, they actually contain, uh, a lot of plants do contain different kinds of pigments. Um, so they'll contain some that are yellow or that are red. Um, and we can see that uh, when we look at fall colors uh, in in trees and st in, in deciduous trees um, in those areas of the world where you'll find lots and lots of deciduous trees. Obviously, there are plenty of parts in the world where you don't really get those kinds of fall colors in tropical places and stuff. But uh, we're going to look at, uh, at a picture of this uh, shortly. So uh, that's also what I've noted uh, up here, that plants aren't, the, the leaves aren't always green. Um, sometimes the plant, you know, sometimes the stem is green, sometimes it's not. Like if you look at a tree, it's not. But if you look at, uh, you know, like a like a little sapling or something, maybe it, uh, you maybe you'll get some plants that have green stems and some that don't. But the sort of the defining characteristic when you look at an organism and you can tell right off the bat that it's a plant, it's because it's probably got green leaves. Um, now, of course, there are some plants that will start out with green leaves and then change to another color. So the change in color depends on the other pigments that are present in the plant. But basically what happens is, so you'll have a, a leaf. So you've got a leaf that looks something like this. It's not the best leaf, but you know, whatever. And inside this leaf uh, is a bunch of chlorophyll inside this leaf. Uh, and so that's the green pigment. That's why it looks green. But then as the temperature starts to, uh, to drop and the, the tree or the plant or whatever is preparing to lose those leaves, that pigment uh, is pretty precious to the plant. All that chlorophyll that's somewhere in this leaf is pretty precious to that plant. So all the chlorophyll uh, is basically removed from the, the leaf. And the stuff that's left in the leaf uh, would be those yellow and red um, pigments that uh, that are still there. And so you'll end up seeing that the leaf starts out green, and then as the chlorophyll needs to be, you know, preserved, it turns yellow, or maybe it turns red or orange if it's got both the yellow and the red pigment. Uh, so things like that. Um, Hopefully none of that is misinformation. I'm trying to re remember the stuff from like my grade 11 like science classes, but like if I'm wrong, totally call me out on it. Just just don't be mean. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so uh, the stuff with uh, plants changing colors and stuff like like leaves changing colors and stuff, it's really a uh, it's a lot more interesting than maybe it uh, it first appears at uh, at face value. But uh, let's take a look at a couple of pictures. I believe that's what's coming up on the next slide. Okay, yeah, so here is uh, a picture of, well, basically fall colors. And um, this isn't something that's been photoshopped or edited or anything. Uh, I took this picture of my backyard uh, maybe last week, uh, last Tuesday or so. Um, and these are the all the colors that you can see uh, in my backyard. So you can see there's plenty of trees uh, in this uh in, you know, like in, in my backyard and in the backyards of my neighbors and stuff. Um, so there's lots that you can see here. Um, but you can also see a wide variety of colors. You know, we've got some green uh, over here. So these would be um, leaves that haven't changed color yet. Um, and then over here, we've got some reds and oranges. Uh, we got some yellows over here. 
um, more, more yellow and orange over here. So we've got plenty of different colors uh, going on here and they all change uh, colors at different times. So we, like you can see here, these ones, they, they still haven't really changed color. They're all green um, here, but then the other ones, they're very much uh, already in uh, fall mode, like in autumn mode. Um, because you can see all the yellow and orange and red and stuff now uh, starting to set in for those trees. So it is really interesting to uh, to watch these uh, these colors change through time, especially right after you've studied all the different stuff with the, the pigments and things. Like I've found fall colors to be a lot more interesting after I learned about how these different pigments and stuff work. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at chlorophyll. So the way it works is when we're considering a leaf and we say that the leaf looks green, what that actually means is that the stuff that's inside the leaf, the pigments that are inside this leaf, actually absorb everything else. They absorb red, orange, yellow. They absorb blues and violets, but they don't absorb green light. So this goes back to the idea that the color that something looks is the only color that's not being absorbed by whatever you're looking at. So, um, for example, I've got a little black coffee mug um, b uh, beside me, but it's got some like yellow and green writing on it. So the parts that have yellow writing on it are actually the parts where as the sun's white light uh, hits the, the coffee mug, everything except yellow gets absorbed and only the yellow light gets reflected. So when I look at the coffee mug, I'm only seeing the yellow light that bounced off the coffee mug. So it looks yellow to me. So with a leaf, we start out with white light. Remember that white light is this combination of all the other colors put together. So we take the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet of the rainbow, and we combine all of those into white light. I say we combine, I actually just mean that this is the light that's coming from the sun. So the light that's coming from the sun is white light. It contains all of these different colors. Um, and then when it hits the leaf, the red, the orange, the yellow, so these ones over here, and these ones over here, the blues, the indigos, the violets, they get absorbed by the leaf. So the leaf is actually making use of uh, that, um, the, the, the energy it contained in those different wavelengths of light. And then the only one that it doesn't want is green. And so that green light gets reflected and comes out of the leaf or come, bounces off the leaf. And that's the only color that ends up in our eye. That was the only the wavelength of light that ends up hitting our retina. So we see the leaf as green. Now, as the chlorophyll uh, is removed and you're only left with those yellow and red pigments, then basically what I mean by those yellow and red pigments, it's uh, that the they'll only reflect the yellows, the oranges, the reds, and they'll absorb the greens, the blues, the purples. Um, so if you have a, 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 a leaf that, hang on, let me see if I can sort of draw this from scratch over on the side. So if you've got a leaf that's you know, yellow, if you've got a yellow leaf, that means that when the red light, maybe that looks a little bit more orange, but whatever, if you've got like a yellowy orange kind of leaf, that means that the red light is, let's say, being absorbed. The yellow light or the orange and yellow light is being reflected, uh, but the green light is being absorbed. The blue light is being absorbed the indigo and violet light is being absorbed. So everything except the color that you see is being reflected. So um, that's the way it works for all things, um, but uh, it's just an interesting point to, to sort of think about when you're looking at uh, plants and pigments. It's really easy to hear green pigment or like this green thing in plants. Oh, it probably absorbs green light and that's why it's green. It's actually the exact opposite. It's because it doesn't absorb green light that it looks green to us. 
And this here is actually a zoomed in picture. I forget the details of whether this was with like an electron microscope or something, but this is a picture I snagged from National Geographic uh, of chlorophyll. Um, super duper zoomed in. Uh, this is what uh, you'll see if you take a, a, a leaf and zoom in. I don't know how many times, probably probably hundreds or thousands of times you have to zoom in to get a picture like this. Um, but yeah, this is uh, what plants look like uh, up close. So now we're going to take a look at photosynthesis, and this is going to be the focus of most of the remainder of this lesson. Um, so we know that plants make their own food using photosynthesis, and we know that this is done with these ingredients over here. They use water, they use carbon dioxide, and they use sunlight. And basically the purpose of the sunlight is that it just serves as energy for the plant to use. But how do you actually take those different ingredients? You know, one is just a form of energy. One of them is typically a liquid or a gas, and one of them is a gas. And you, how do you take those three things and turn them into something that you can use? It's not that they just take those in ingredients directly and bam, they've just got energy out of it. It's like if you're trying to bake a cake, you need to get all of those different ingredients together, but it's not actually a cake until you combine them all in a special way and, you know, use heat energy to, you know, to actually bake it and stuff. So um, you need to do a similar process here for photosynthesis. So what we're going to look at now is from the chemistry side of things, so from like the looking at molecules kind of thing, uh, looking at molecules and interactions between different molecules, how you can recombine uh, atoms and stuff. We're going to look at how you can create the sugar that plants need. So. Uh, like I just said, we're going to be looking at this from more of a chemistry approach, uh, just to understand on a molecular level how photosynthesis actually works. So um, we know we have carbon dioxide. That's uh, when you write it out with the element symbols, it looks like this, CO2. And what that basically means is that it's made up of one carbon atom, one atom of carbon, that's the C up here, and it's made up of two oxygen atoms, and that's this O2 business up here. So the O stands for oxygen, and the two stands for how many of those atoms that we have. If there's no number, like with carbon, it's just a C and there's no number. If there's no number, that means it's just one. With water, um, so, that's, so that, um, that takes care of carbon dioxide. Now with water, uh, it's made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And we can see that when we look at the other way to write water, which is H2O. So if we write out water as H2O, then we can see that the H2 takes care of this bit, two hydrogen atoms, goes around like that. There's our H2, um, is taken care of by the two oxygen or the two hydrogen atoms and then there's one oxygen atom and that's the O that goes over at the end here this O right here so um, from this we can see uh, the sort of the chemical composition of one molecule of carbon dioxide and one molecule of water um, now here's a little picture uh, of carbon uh, dioxide and of water. So over here is our carbon dioxide and we've got a carbon atom, this black one, in the center and then we've got oxygen atoms on the outside, these red ones over here. Um, it's sort of a convention in chemistry as far as I can tell that carbon atoms are usually shown in, uh, in black and oxygen atoms are shown in red. So I'm going to stick to that sort of color scheme as we go through this. And then over here is our water molecule. Uh, and we've got one oxygen atom in red again, 
and then the convention for hydrogen is to show it in white uh, or perhaps this light gray that you're seeing on the screen right now um, but so basically I'm going to be representing carbon atoms with black oxygen atoms with red and hydrogen atoms with white as we go through um, the rest of this now these pictures look a little bit weird so I'm going to redraw them uh, and then we're going to use my redrawn versions to show how photosynthesis actually works. So here I've gone and redrawn our carbon dioxide and water molecules. So here's our carbon dioxide. The carbon is still in black. So that's our carbon right in there. Um, and uh, we've got our Actually, hang on, maybe I'll write that in white so that's a little clearer. So here's our carbon atom in black, and then here's our oxygen in red, and our other oxygen in red. So there's our carbon dioxide. For water, we've got our oxygen in the middle, so there's our O for oxygen, and then we've got hydrogen on the outside. So we've got hydrogen here and hydrogen over here. So there's our carbon dioxide and our water molecules. So here's our, um, those, are, those are the two molecules that we need. The last ingredient is sunlight. That's just energy. We don't have a molecule associated with that. So when it comes to working with the different atoms, this is all we've got at our disposal. We've got carbon dioxide and we've got water. So that means that we've got a little bit of carbon, a lot of oxygen, and a decent amount of hydrogen to work with. And the thing that we want to make out of that stuff is this guy. This is all one molecule. Uh, this isn't what it actually looks like. The structure of uh, a glucose molecule is actually quite complicated. Um, it looks something like this. If you Google it, you'll see something like this. Um, and then you've got like a stick over there and then... You've, so you've got carbon atoms all around this uh, this hexagon, um, and except for except for this guy, that's an oxygen, and then you've got this stick, and there's another carbon atom up here, and then there's some oxygen and some hydrogen sticking out over here, and we've got some hydrogen out on this side, uh, and some hydrogen sticking out up there. Eh. And then we've got, jeez, uh, oh we've got like, there's just a whole mess of stuff. There's oxygen and hydrogen sticking out here. And we've got like a little, uh, a little, uh, I want to say there's, an, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. I think there's another oxygen and hydrogen in here. Like so. There's another oxygen and hydrogen in there. There's a little hydrogen that sticks out from here, a little hydrogen that sticks out from here, some oxygen that comes out here and perhaps over here, and some hydrogen that sticks out there. And out there. like, it's just a big mess. You can Google a picture of what glucose actually looks like, but this thing is not gonna help us understand how photosynthesis works. So that's what the glucose molecule actually looks like. What I've done is I've taken the carbon, the oxygen, and the hydrogen atoms from that glucose molecule. I've counted them, and I've just sorted them. So down here, we've got sort of a sorted version of what the carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms look like. So up here, we've got six carbon atoms. We've got six carbon atoms. Down here, we've got six oxygen atoms. And over here, we've got 12 hydrogen atoms. So if we look at the, the, the sort of the, the chemical formula for how to write down these different molecules, for carbon dioxide, we already looked at it uh, on the previous slide, it's CO2, because there's one carbon, two oxygen. For water, we know it's H2O, so there's our H2O. And then for glucose, it's, I'm going to write it up here, it's C6, so that's the six carbon atoms, H12, so we've got our 12 hydrogen atoms, the white ones, and then O6, that's the red ones at the bottom there. So 
if we look at what we've got on this side, this is the stuff that we um, that we take from the environment and we want to make sugar out of it. If we just look at what we have right now, we've only got one carbon atom here, but somehow we're supposed to get six at the end. So clearly one carbon dioxide molecule and one water molecule is not going to be enough to give us the sugar molecule, this glucose molecule that we want. We've only got on the left side in this box, we've only got three oxygens, but on the right side we want six. And uh, over here, again on the left side, we've only got two hydrogens, but over here we want 12 hydrogens. So clearly we need to take um, more carbon dioxide and more water molecules in order to make just one glucose molecule. So let's look at how that works. So basically what we have here is this is the way in which photosynthesis works. Uh, and by that I mean over here we have a collection of CO2. Here's a collection of carbon dioxide. We've got our CO2 right there. Hopefully you can read that. I know I'm writing in purple on top of purple, but hopefully you can still read it. Um, over here is our H2O. So we've got plenty of water here. It's not just one water molecule. And same with the carbon dioxide. It's not just one. It's lots. Um, so if we go through and count them, so right here is one carbon dioxide molecule. And right here is one water molecule. But we can see that this right here is just a copy of the first one. And this is just a copy again. And in total, we've got one, two, three, four, five, oh boy, six. So in total, we've got six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules. So down here, I'm going to write a six in front, a big six, not like a little subscript, six carbon dioxides and six water molecules. Now, let's see if this right-hand side makes sense given the stuff that we have on the left-hand side. Basically, what we want to make is this guy, this glucose molecule. This is what we want um, as, a, as a plant. This is what the plant wants um, so that it can use it for uh, its energy. So if we look at our left hand side, so all of this stuff over here, everything on the left side, if we look at all of that, we can see that we've got six carbon atoms, right? We've got one carbon atom per molecule of carbon dioxide, and we've got six of those molecules. So if we just count the black dots on the left side, we find that there are six. Over here on the right, we've got six black dots. Perfect. So that part is good. The carbon is taken care of. Now let's look at the hydrogen, the white dots. So over here, we've got six going down this way. And we've got six on the other side of the oxygen in our water molecules. So in total, we've got 12 hydrogen atoms on the left side, uh, like on the left side of the equal sign. And over here on the right side, we have 12 again. We've got 12 in our glucose molecule right here. So the hydrogen checks out. With oxygen, it's a little bit tricky. With oxygen, we only need six on the right-hand side to make our one glucose molecule, right? And suppose we look at our water molecule. Here are six oxygen atoms, six of these red dots, which could account for those six on the right-hand side. But if we now look at the carbon dioxide, we've got an extra six over here and an extra six over here. So we've got in total an extra 12 oxygen atoms on the left side that don't fit in our glucose molecule. So we've already taken all of the stuff that we need. We took the carbons, we took all the hydrogens, and we took six of the oxygen atoms to make this glucose molecule. But we have 12 oxygen atoms left over. And that's these ones down here. Those are the 12 leftover oxygen atoms. 
And what these are is if you pair them off, so you pair them off like this. So you got a pair right there, a pair right there, and we got six pairs of that, right? So we've got six pairs of two oxygen atoms. Well, if we just had a pair of oxygen atoms, if we look at what we did before, or if we think back to what we did a slide or two ago, if you've got two atoms of one kind, you write that with a little subscript. So we've got oxygen, but we've got two atoms per molecule. So we've got O2. This is oxygen gas, what we breathe and what plants give off. But it's not just oxygen because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of these oxygen atoms. So if we take all of those pairs together, we find that we get six molecules of oxygen gas. So uh, that's where the oxygen is ultimately taken care of. So we've got six oxygen molecules, and this is the oxygen gas that plants give off. So this is why we say that plants take in carbon dioxide. They need the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. They take in water. This whole reaction, everything that we're seeing on this slide, happens because the plants also get some energy from the sun that allows them to break apart and recombine these molecules and separate the atoms from each other and then recombine them into that weird hexagonal thing. They use the sun's energy for that and it spits out glucose, which is this monstrous thing in the, with all of these all of these things here that's our glucose molecule but it also spits out six pairs of oxygen atoms it spits out six molecules of oxygen gas so this is why we say that plants take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen this reaction that creates the glucose that they need gives them a whole bunch of extra oxygen that they don't need because they need to take in a minimum of six carbon dioxides and six water molecules every time that they want to make a glucose molecule because they need at least six carbon atoms and they need at least 12 hydrogen atoms so they need at least six of each of these in order to get that and taking in six carbon dioxides and six waters means that they're going to be left over with this extra 12 oxygen atoms which they release as oxygen gas so that's how we get that plants take in carbon dioxide, take in water, take in sunlight, and they create glucose for their own purposes, and then release oxygen. They've got no use for it. So here's sort of the chemistry version of that equation. Uh, you can see it here. Um, on the left side, uh, the stuff that the plants take in, these are called the reactants. That's this right here. The reactants, so that's Here's our carbon dioxide, but we know that there are six of them. Here's our water, but we know that there are six of those molecules. And sunlight for the purpose of energy. And the product that we get is we get some glucose. That's this right here, the C6H12O6. That's our glucose. And it also creates oxygen. But we know from the last slide, it creates six pairs of that. So... Ultimately, we can sort of just look at this picture as a nice summary of the photosynthetic process. Um, they take in carbon dioxide. They've colored the, the atoms differently, but they've taken in carbon dioxide. They take in water. They use energy from sunlight. They create glucose and they release oxygen. So the glucose, the sugar, they use that themselves for their own energy and then oxygen is their waste product. The same way that we breathe in oxygen and we give off carbon dioxide, they breathe in carbon dioxide and they give off oxygen. So that's basically how photosynthesis works. So now real quick, just to wrap up, because uh, I did mention at the beginning uh, that we would uh, talk a little bit about seeds. So uh, if you look at a plant seed, um, Within the seed, it contains just a little bit of stuff. So it contains an embryo, which is like the baby plant, um, that if it gets the right nutrients, um, 
it will grow into a fully fledged new plant. Um, and to ensure that it gets those nutrients, the seeds also contain little packets of food. And those packets of food are called cotyledons. Um, and basically the, the little baby plant, the little embryo inside, um, will use those packets of food uh, to grow. It'll, it'll basically uh, use that as its sustenance. Um, and if we wanted to further subdivide plants, so if you remember that we started out by saying we got plants, and if you want, you can subdivide it into plants that have seeds and plants that have no seeds. We can subdivide it further into um, whether the seeds contain one or two cotyledons. So if we break this down further, we've got one cotyledon, one like little food packet, or two cotyledons, two of those food packets. So uh, plants that produce seeds that only have one cotyledon are called monocots or monocotyledons. If you look at just this word monocot, mono means one, and cot is come, it comes from the, the, that word cotyledon. So it's saying mono one, Cot, cotyledon, one cotyledon, one food packet for the baby embryo. And plants that produce seeds with two cotyledons are called dicots. The di comes from two, and again, cot comes from cotyledon, so two food packets. Um, so that's just a sort of a super brief uh, breakdown of uh, the structure of a seed. Um, that's uh, I, I'm only keeping it this short because I don't want this lesson to become uh, insanely long. I know there are already a couple of lessons I've put out this year that are um, more like 50 minutes instead of 35. And right now we're coming up on the 37 minute mark. So I'm going to uh, sort of uh, wrap up this lesson now. Um, but uh, by all means, if you guys want to know more about seeds, let me know. So yeah, I've just left this uh, last placeholder sort of slide that if you guys want to learn more about seeds, uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, do a lesson um, that, that talks a little bit more about plants and a little bit more about seeds and stuff. But uh, if I don't uh, really hear anything uh, from you, then this we can consider to be sort of the end of our discussion on on plants, the sort of the main idea I wanted to get across when we were talking about plants is how photosynthesis works. So I'm happy that we got through that. If you guys are interested in learning more, let me know. If it's only one or two of you that want to learn more, then uh, we can talk about that uh, uh, another time uh, and maybe sort something out that's just sort of like a, a small class just for two or three of you. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about plants, just like a one-off thing. But uh, yeah. So the thing I wanted to accomplish today, we have accomplished. We've gotten through our discussion on photosynthesis. Uh, it can be kind of confusing. So if you have any questions, don't be shy. Feel free to uh, ask either in a, a comment or in our Zoom meeting or, uh, um, or on our Google Classroom. Um, but yeah, if you, uh, if you need a hand with any of this stuff, get in touch with me. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one.